I uh you did the thing. Yeah, I, I won I won a freaking Ironman. Yeah, 140.6 mile race. I you said I could win. Kyle said I could win. Stu said I could win. People said like, oh dude, you're winning. And people say it like it's just like, oh just go win. And it's like it's a lot harder than that. But um Yeah, but you have the you had the confidence that you could win this race. Uh I did, yes, I think I did. But I went in with one sole purpose, and that was to qualify for Kona. Um, I knew there's four slots up for grabs, and I was, I'm was i pretty invested heavily into the Pro Series. Um, if you want to do good in the Pro Series, you got to go to Kona. Also, every male or pro athlete needs to go to Kona, right? It's the world champs, so blah, blah, blah. Anyway, um, I was pretty nervous. The morning of the race, um, dropped everything off, rocked the bike put down the special needs, uh, you know, for an Ironman, we've got to use the transition bags. That's just a hassle in itself. And just one more thing to remember and grab and whatever, everything's just not there, quick and simple, like a 70.3. So did that, um, put the special needs bag down, walked to the swim start with Soph. Me and her were just kind of posted up mm -hmm. behind the swim start a little bit, sat on the ground. I was pretty nervous. Um, I, it was also starting to rain. so. I was just getting more stressed. And I was like, oh, I have a dark pair of goggles. I was just letting all the excuses come into my head. So she's just like, dude, you're good. And then Jackie Herring walked by. I love Jackie, great friend, um, even better person. Um, she walked up to me and she goes, Trevor, if you do this right, it is not that much harder than a training day. And I was like, yeah, you're probably right. She's like, 70.3, different. Ironman, eight hours, zone two, tempo, LT1, whatever you want to call it. It's a pretty aerobic day. Like it's gonna hurt eventually because your body's probably dying, but it's a pretty aerobic heavy event. Got into the swim, super easy swim for a guy like me. It's just a thousand yards straight out. There's not like a turn buoy 200 yards in. Problem with that sometimes is obviously when you have to turn like two minutes in the race, everyone's usually in the race two minutes in. And so you get your crap kicked in around the turn. So that's nice because then everyone can kind of do their own thing and swim the first turn buoy. I, and I guess reverse real quick, we we're standing on the start line. I looked to my left because I realized all the contenders or the favorites have colored caps. And so I was like, oh crap, where's Lionel? Lionel was like probably 20 bodies to my right in a purple cap. Jackson Laundry was also in a purple cap, but I disregarded Jackson, great swimmer, blah, blah, blah. Lionel, you're a great swimmer, but you know what I mean. They're both in purple caps. Got out, I got out great. Um, it's great coming down from altitude swimming at sea level because altitude swimming hard it's hard, you don't have air, like you are so hypoxic. Um, so I started, I was on Michael Weiss's feet, uh, about 500 in, uh, probably one of the favorites in the race. Um, I can always tell it's him because he swims with the kit down and he kicks like a motorboat. Like, it, it's actually insane. Like, like feet out of the water, just white water everywhere. Um, and I kind of popped my head around, and this is how I, I could tell I was feeling good because I was super cognizant and aware of what was going on around me. And I saw the purple cap, right? like. 10 meters in front of me, break away from Michael. I was like, are you kidding me? And I was like, that's Lionel. I've got to get to Lionel, that's the second pack. Bridged up to Lionel, uh, foreshadow, or whatever the word is. It wasn't Lionel. 
I burned a massive match, covered like a 10 meter deficit, got on the purple cap's feet. Bro, it was Jackson Laundry in like the main peloton of the swim. And we're like 800, 500, 800 in. I'm swimming with like Hanson, Thor, Jackson, good swimmers, like 24 minute, 70.3 guys, like solid second pack swimmers, the main pack of the race. And then we went around the second buoy to come back home for the first time. I, th they, I think they looked at me, like Hanson definitely looked at me, Jackson looked at me. They were probably like, what? Like they're either swimming really bad or Trevor's swimming really good. And then we get out of the water, Mike Riley's like, Trevor Foley is like, I said a 70, I said a 70.3 swim PR, first lap of an Ironman. Don't recommend doing that one. It was not a wetsuit as well. Shows how I'm progressing in the swim, so that's great. I think those guys here, Trevor Foley's with the main pack, they drill it. And I'm already at, I'm ready to get, I'm ready to go to the bike, I'm freaking tapped. And then 3000 Asia, which is also in the water with us now for the second rectangular loop. I lost the feet. Um, it was just carnage out there. Um, trying to get to the, to the, like the, the next buoy 3000 N and I was just honestly flandering, I guess that's the right word. Like I, I was just so, cause I was my head, I, I was swimming my head up. So my back started hurting, lost the groove, bled so much time but just tried to keep it together. Cause I know I had, I had such a good swim the first lap. I knew, dude, even if you swim zone one, you're not gonna be miles behind. Came out of the water, six minutes behind. Texas last year, I was 12 minutes behind Mark Watt. Now I'm six, moving in the right direction. Um, so that was, that was awesome in the time. Lionel's right there. Thor was 45 seconds of the road. Great, two best bikers in the race. Uh, Thor and, and whatever, two, two of the best bikers in the race, Thor and Lionel. I'm right there with, day done, easy. Uh, get onto the bike. My bike weighed approximately 2,000 pounds because I, I had I had two, I had four liters of water on my bike, plus gels, or hydration, whatever you wanna call it, water. Uh, I had two liters of water on the rear saddle of my bike, so the back of my bike, 1,000 pounds. I had a round bottle. So I decided not, I know everyone's super anal about aerodynamics on the down tube of the bike. I rode the round bottle. Cause you know what's slower? You know what? You know, five watts losing that. It was slower to walk the last 10 miles of the marathon. I'll tell you that, five watts. So I ran the round bottle and then one between the arms. So I had a ton of fluid, but wow, I had to go hard up those hills. I was like, is Lionel going hard up these hills? And I was like, no, your bike's 200 pounds, so you're having to do double the watts he is. Um, but I did that on purpose because I was so scarred from my other Ironmans, walking, blowing up. This, this, this comes out as being an idiot. I wasn't an idiot. I just wasn't fueling properly for these races. And this time I was like, dude, I have a plan that I made with Jared um, that we did the testing at. We, we looked at how many calories I'm burning, how many I need to have. He was adamant on sodium because I've had hamstring cramping in the past. We had everything dialed and it was perfect. It was great. I actually ended up taking a bit more than we talked about just because I felt like I could stomach it. And I ended up pushing like, 160 carbs an hour or something like it was crazy because I had I had uh, a few scoops of the raw fuel in each of the bottles a, f a little bit of maple syrup stored away just like a for like an oh shit moment if you lose something end up just taking that and then I grabbed Morton's off the course and then the luxury of having the, the the round the normal bottle cage on the down tomb of my bike is then I could grab a normal water bottle from the aid station set it perfectly in there because the problem is is you're not allowed to put it down your shirt anymore I, I wish we could still do that, not even just for an aerodynamic reason, but I was doing that like my first Ironman ever for a storage because like, where do you put those plastic bottles? And so I was just putting water in there. So I was throwing back stuff all day, felt strong all the way through the end. It was an honor, privilege, dream come true to ride with Lionel, you know, riding with your hero for 112 miles. That's just cool, right? Like, you know, not many people will go get to play football with Tom Brady or what, play basketball with LeBron. So. That was my moment, so cool. Um, especially on a two lap course like this on some of the hills, hundreds of people on the hills. And they go crazy, I'm sure for everyone, but they go ballistic for the boss. <laughs> like people run into the road and lose it for Lionel. And I was obviously behind him, so I was feeding off that energy. A few people knew me as well, which is so cool. And then we come into town and uh, me and Lionel are uh, two, three in the race and Mark Hawk was, uh, was up the road eight and a half minutes, I think I heard, coming into the T2. But again, Kona was the only goal. Marquot had a Kona slot. I, I, if Marquot was an hour ahead of me, I didn't care. I don't, like, he was so removed from my mind. Uh, I had a slow transition. I just sat down for about a minute, took my time, put the socks on, put the shoes on. I had 
uh, little Ziploc baggies, had three of them, salt pills, raw salt, gels, backup gels. I mean, I had lunch, put it in the back of my kit, was wait, I was going, and I kind of like shuffled out of transition probably the first 10 minutes waiting for, for Sanders to catch up because I, I knew he was going to be way better at pacing than me. I, I've run, I've run 16 minute five Ks, my first five Ks of Ironman's retarded. Um, so I didn't want to do that. So I kind of did that, but was just feeling good and running consistently. And so at the time he never came back. And then, so I, and I finished the first loop, 13 miles, grabbed the special needs bag. I'm kind of hearing, dude, you just cut Marquardt's lead in half. Well, if you cut it in half the first lap, you got one more lap. So now it's a sprint finish to the end if everyone does what they're supposed to do. Didn't even fucking let it go into my mind, though, for a second. I, was, I asked Sophie. I think I saw her at mile 14, and she's like, 345 for Marquardt. And I screamed. I was like, where's Kona? And she's like, 25 minutes, you're fine. And I was like, I'm not. And I'm just like still waiting for the blow up. And this is 14 or 15 miles in, still waiting for the blow up, still waiting just to, for the headache or the, the cramping, whatever. And then it's not coming, it's not coming. Uh, we go to the out and back on River Road. I make the turn. I turn off of River Road to about 21 miles. And someone goes, you're a minute down. And I look up the hill and th there he is. He's 100 meters in front of me and it's bright red kit. I see the police, the moto, the whole nine yards. And I, this, I yelled at myself. I'm like, all right, it's time to finish the effing job. And that's the first time I thought the whole race, so I'm 7, 15 into the race, like, all right, this is your race. He did a good job, but it's time to win the effing race. And I was just like, just do it. And I just gave myself no ultimatum, sprinted up the hill like an idiot. And then we get to town up, what, what's that? Like it's the, we go up the hill with all the fans and you go right to like the golf course right there. So like mile 23. Soph's like almost in tears, screaming at me like I'm gonna win the race. But I still got 5K to go, I'm still waiting for the blow up. Mark Watts, five feet in front of me. I'm storming up the hill, everyone's yelling my name. Like thousands of people were yelling my name. It was amazing experience. Thank you to everyone who was cheering. So I steamroll up 99% of the hill, and I'm like, whoa, left hamstring. Left hamstring went from this big to this big. And uh, so I pull up. I pull out raw salt. Um, it's just like a little, a little tube of, of salt and uh, sodium and stuff. I start, I start licking the crap out of that. I'm like, go away, go away for the cramp. And then, um, and then, my, then my mouth is like burning because I just took in like a pound of salt. And then luckily there was an aid station with water. And then I just closed my eyes for a second as I'm walking up the hill, took a deep breath. And I was like, dude, 20 minutes of racing left. It's a ton of time still, like it's 5K left. That's a long time still. Um, I shook my arms, recomposed myself and gave myself um, to the top of that hill. So a mile long hill. So sorry, when all that happened, that was 22 mile mark. I ran that next mile, it was a mile long hill up the top of the hill. I saw, I saw Kenny and I overtook uh, Mark Watt at mile 23, right at the turnaround. He tried to stay with me for maybe two steps, and then I just, I, I, I feel him go away from me, and then a fan yells, you got 100 meters on him. And I'm like, what? And then I look behind me, and he's, he's walking, and I'm just like, oh, he's done. And then I see Kenny, and he's like, use the downhill. <laughs> Freaking Toffer, bro. And I see Toffer as well at the race, and you guys are on use the downhill and I'm like all right I'm trying my hamstrings are like gonna blow and um but again I'm I'm still cognizant of the blow up I'm still taking fuel I'm still taking gels and I just I put in a, a big surge 620 mile pace so wow um down the hill and make it to mile 24 so in town you make that last right hand turn you have a mile out to 25 and a mile back to 26 and then finish for the point two I walk around the last turn because I feel my hamstrings cramping a little bit. So I walk one more time, but I knew I had a minute on Marquat, and I I just didn't I like again once you once you cramp and like you know your whole muscles convulse you're kind of done. I've experienced that three times now, and so I was like, dude, just walk, recompose. Like if he catches you, you're gonna out sprint him. I'm, I'm taking myself over anybody in a sprint and triathlon. No offense, and. Took more, took more gels, uh, there was an aid station right there. Hit more fuel, literally it's still 10 minutes of racing left. I'm still fueling. Uh, hit the turnaround, Team Barlow was right there. 
Yelp told me I had like 90 seconds, ended up winning by I think two minutes and just poured it on home, come into the, it's a massive stadium you finish in at Plast, it's awesome. I see Soph like standing like behind the finish line tape, like all the cameras are there and stuff. I just start bawling my eyes out. And, um, and yeah, I just like grab the tape and just start crying and so hugs me and she starts crying. I'm just like, oh my God, like, it was the most emotional I, I've ever been. I, I don't know what happened. Like I, I was chocked full of adrenaline and anger. Like I, like if someone ran, ran in front of me, I would have just like pushed them out of the way. Like I was just angry. And then I just, with 10 seconds to go, I see Soph and I just like break down. So yeah, that was that was that was that was the race breakdown. So emotional at the end. I mean, I I saw I think I was 20 minutes removed from the win yesterday um, at uh, at yesterday at Placid and Kenny like rolls up on like an e-bike or something and he's like freaking out and I just, like dab him up and I'm like we're going to Frankfurt, meaning like we're gonna win the series, like we're going to Frankfurt, we're gonna win that whatever, we're gonna do good in that race and we're going to Kona, we're winning. We're in a quarter mil at, in the series. And that was what like was rushing through my head. And then I talked to David, um, eight, my, one of my, the agents uh, this morning. He's like, what about Kona? And then I'm like, you know, thinking to myself, like, well, you swim second pack in Kona. You ride well. And you run 230 something. You do halfway decent. That's pretty cool. When the series or top three in the series is pretty cool. So there's... First world problems, right? But it's like different. I don't know. So I don't know. I don't know the answer to that question. Um, I I know I'm going to be in Kona. I know I'm going to be in top of 70.3 worlds. That's all I got nailed down right now. I mean, I put mine, uh, I'm like Cam Worf 2.0. Uh, Cam Worf actually texted me today. I think you can, uh, I'm a big fan of Cam Worf and stuff, but he texted me and said, great work. But um, anyway, I'm Cam Worf 2.0. That's a joke because Cam signs up for every race in, in the world doesn't show up to like any of them. That's kind of me. I just sign up for all these races just because you never know what's going to happen. Right. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't know the answer to that question. Um, I, I got to, I read to really think about, sit down and think about it with, with Kenny and Stu and Soph and figure out what's next. But yeah, if, if we do go to Frankfurt, yeah, I'm having Kenny come, not even a film. I just need a friend because I'm not going to race in Europe by myself. So it's going to be on a family vacation. <laughs> I ain't, I ain't doing that crap by myself. So yeah, we'll figure it out. But um, yeah, like I said, um, I heard a lot of people cheering my name out there. Thank you. Um, like I said, I think we're building a great community of people. It means a lot. Um, took a ton of pictures of people this weekend. It was really cool. Um, and yeah, like I said, I think we're gonna be working with Kenny full time now. So let, let us know in the comments, like what kind of videos you want. I know like the standard day in the life's 400 watt bike videos sub four five, sub four minute mile run workout videos but like yeah what do you what do you guys want to see what's cool to see um and yeah i'll uh, i'll see everyone at least at kona and topo so bye